Well, see, the RV1 project was begun about uh, four years ago when I happened to stumble across it uh, in, a, in a hangar in Houston. Uh, we uh, were able to acquire it with a nonprofit corporation. We've restored it with the help of hundreds and hundreds of RVers around the country, their donations of time, money, and help. Uh, then we took it on a tour, a national tour. We believe we've flown about 12,000 miles all around the country and into Canada, and now it's back here, sitting about 40 miles south of Oshkosh. We'll be flying it in tomorrow, and the pilot for tomorrow's last flight before we turn it over to the EAA Museum will be Dick Van Grunsven, the builder himself. The national tour probably had about uh, 30, 35, 40 stops. I'd have to go back and count them up on the map. We missed only three due to weather the entire way. We had uh, probably well over a dozen pilots who flew it along that time, uh, very, people with very good reputations. I was the chief pilot, but many of the folks that flew it I've never met. I only knew them by recommendation or reputation. It was a very unique tour in that regard in that we actually passed it from pilot to pilot uh, with notes and phone calls and advice from the previous guy. It has been flawless along the route. All we've done is oil changes, a few little checks here and there, and we're just impressed as heck with the airplane. Really, what we did was we just determined what it needed, what we could eliminate, what we could fix, and how we could make better. And uh, the short list was it had a, a great big tractor battery in it. We put a little Odyssey in it. We did a, re a new weight. After we put it together, we were going to do a new weight and balance, which we did. But uh, we determined that it really didn't need a whole bunch of, of ma nothing really major, but just some general cleanup. We. Uh, disassembled it almost as much as we could. We put new, uh, some new hinges on the elevators, and new, hin new, new hinge pins, and, and uh, we took the ailerons apart and took a bunch of the push rods out and changed some of the hind bearings in the, aler in the aileron push rods and uh, uh, flap push rods, that sort of thing. Cleaned all that stuff up, repainted some of it, the reprimed, sandblasted some small parts all along the ailerons, and, and, uh, and the major problem we had was the, the canopy frame. The canopy frame had been, uh, the canopy had obviously been changed several times, and Bob here took the old canopy frame and it made a brand new one. The, the other one would look like Swiss cheese, and it just wasn't going to work. The, uh, the people that at Airplane Plastics gave us two new bubbles, because the one we had was cracked, so they we took dimensions of the old bubble we, and made a, made a, a new uh, a new uh, canopy skirt, new canopy new canopy frame out of Bob's shop. I have a real appreciation for the old time home builders to scratch build a canopy frame trying to bend tubing and weld stuff, and every time I welded it, it warped the other way. But uh, I, I was on a deadline here and. and uh, you don't know me, but I'm the world's slowest builder when it comes to airplane building, but these guys held me under the <laughs> under pressure, and in two weeks we built a new canopy frame, also put a new tail wheel on it. I had to ground seal a bunch of parts I had, and the tail wheel on that airplane wasn't fit to do anything with. So. One thing that really surprised me about the RV-1 was the help we got. I thought that it would be a BS session, and we would, on Saturday afternoon we'd call on the internet, uh, Work, to work session for this coming Saturday, and I just knew it'd be all kinds of people come up and it'd be a beer, shoot the bull, nothing get done. I was afraid I was gonna have to do it all. Well, we had all these volunteers, Bob and and uh, Paul Dodd, and even Rosie Rosales came out from California to work and spend a day working on the airplane. And uh, a lot of our local yokels showed up, and we had some very, very productive Saturdays working on this airplane. Alpha one, two, three, four, Bravo one, two, early one, two, three, four, Delta one, two, three, four, Echo one, two, three, four, Puddle one, two, nine, eight, seven, six, four, three, one, one. <laughs> 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 we're, still for two. We're, we're still waiting for two. We're still waiting for two.
to Oshkosh 2012. Well, I know that I don't have to tell you what's happening up here, but we are celebrating today one great achievement that started humbly but has led to the most successful kit aircraft company in history and the most successful line of fabulously designed aircraft. So no question about it, the RV-1 has had a tremendous impact on the lives of many of us and represents the innovation and the creation and the can humanness that we're known for yet yet. But we're going to make Mr. Van Grossen wait for just a little bit longer while we bring up someone very special, and that's Ernie Butcher, who represents the friends of the RV-1. And Ernie's going to tell you just a little bit about the story of the RV-1 and the friends of the RV-1, and then we're going to give you the moments you've been waiting for, and that's a chance to hear from Mr. Van Gross and himself. So, Ernie Butcher? When the RV-1 was discovered, it took quite a while to uh, negotiate its purchase. Uh, because the gentleman that had the airplane had it for 20 hours, flew it, had it for 20 years, flew it for a thousand hours, and really didn't want to sell it. But a little perseverance, and he said, "You know that sounds like a good program," and agreed to sell the airplane. Next was to convince this man to allow the homebuilt community the opportunity to make sure it was airworthy allow it to go on tour, and ultimately partnered with the EAA and donated to the museum. It took you a little while to come to that decision, but uh, we twisted his arm and he finally agreed that that might be the right thing to do. Well, truly the community stepped up, uh, absolutely need to recognize EAA, they have been outstanding at every level in support of this project, and without their assistance, we would probably not be here today. Uh, and I want to thank you, Mr. Hightower, and Chad Jensen. And I'm going to have to put Tom Bukaresny in there because a phone call to him one day. Uh, Tom, we have this airplane. Uh, what do you think about putting it in a museum? done one day uh, so he absolutely needs to be recognized for providing the place and the balance of the AA for providing the it's rare in anyone's life that they become a part of aviation history mr. van Grunsman allowed us as a community uh, hundreds of us to become a part of aviation history using his airplane. And for that, I thank you, Mr. Van Grunsman. Yeah, I'm not really prepared much for this. Uh, a lot has been said already. Basically, the RV-1, uh, during the relatively few years I had it, I just made a few continual improvements. Well, we got about as far as I figured I, I could go with that airframe, and then we moved on to the RV-3, etc., etc. The whole idea, the whole way along, is to make an airplane that's enjoyable to fly, useful to fly, and as safe as we can. Ernie made reference to the community that uh, helped restore that airplane and put it on tour. Uh, I can't use that word with enough, the word community, with enough reverence because a lot of the success behind the whole RV thing has been the community. The fact that people network, they work together, they're all a bunch of great people. I wish you could have all been down at uh, Dodge County Airport when we did the, the briefing and all for this flight with all of those airplanes, all of the pilots, the level of professionalism and community that was exhibited there was really quite something to behold. So, and when I saw all the airplanes, I was the last to take off, so I see all the airplanes formed up in front of me, and I just got to say it was very, very moving. It was great gratitude I have for all of the effort people have put in to make things like this happen. I wish I could have been here to see the flyover. I imagine I'll get a chance to see a video of that. But uh, and one other little thing I wanted to uh, do right now. I want to introduce you to somebody. 
You want to kill the robot? Oh, so that works. <laughs> okay, this is Lily, our, my granddaughter, two and a half years old. Um, the jumpsuit, jumpsuit she is wearing, my wife Diane, made for our son Greg 35 years ago. <laughs> it has come out of cloth walls and it doesn't feel look great. <laughs> to the airplane, which I am hesitant to pull over. Would sure like to discuss keeping this airplane in flying condition so I can come back next year. Deal. I would say, I would think it's safe to say that this is the key to innovation. Would you agree? Yeah. That is the key to innovation. Mr. Van Grossen, before you get off the stage, I know you're not real keen on things like this sometimes, but but let me tell you on behalf of our 176,000 members and growing, you represent the very best of what's possible among aviators. You represent the very best about what's possible with personal innovation in aviation. So I'm going to read this thing that we're going to give to you, and it's going to it's for you to always remember the RV1. The RV-1 is going to be cared for in perpetuity in Air Museum and it will be kept in airworthy condition for your wishes, okay? Yeah. Yes! Yeah. We will care for this and we will treasure this for what it is. But it says on the flag to Mr. Van Rosen, in appreciation of the innovative design and craftsmanship that created the RV-1 to be preserved forever in the EAA Museum. Thank you, On behalf of all. <laughs> it's been one heck of a project. That's all I can say. Thousands of people. It's been a heck of a project.